Welcome from Abiding Love Worship Center Ministries with evangelist uh, Aaron and Sheila Gervais. And uh, I'm going to be bringing a short video to you uh, today about something that uh, is talked about in the Christian realms. And a lot of people think they know what it is. Some people think they might know what it is. And so we're going to talk about today. It's called the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. It's what they call the unforgivable sin. And many Christians uh, look around and they uh, contemplate what that unforgivable sin is. And some people think so. If you, if you tease somebody who is Pentecostal, uh, speaking in tongues, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, some people go so far as they think it's divorce is the unforgivable sin. And uh, some people think they, they make a list. And uh, what's interesting is the list is usually the sins they don't do that is the unforgivable sin. So we're going to go into a little bit about this and explain what it is. Uh, to take that doubt away from you as a believer, especially if you're a believer who's uh, kind of fearful that you committed the unforgivable sin. And so we're going to look at this, and where that passage comes from is Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. Jesus speaking, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, speaking of Jesus, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Well, that's a scary little passage right there. But we have to find out what is going on. So what you have to do is you've got to take it in context of the whole chapter. If you look at the whole chapter, um, there's, it gets to the point where it's talking about you know, Jesus was doing miracles, and then at this time, you have the Pharisees come to him, and they say that he does miracles by Beelzebub, the Beelzebub, the prince of devils. In essence, they're saying every miracle he's doing was by the hand of Satan. Now, remember, everything Jesus did, all of his miracles, all, of his, all the stuff he did, was to point to the fact that he is the Savior, he is the Lord, and that a person needs to receive him as the Lord and Savior to be saved. In essence, when, when uh, these, uh, the Pharisees were saying this, they're saying that what he was doing was by Satan, so therefore the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit through his miracles to demonstrate and testify to who Jesus is, they were ignoring. In fact, let's back it up a little bit. And once again, they just said, uh, you did it by Beelzebub, but the prince of devils, and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself, how shall then his kingdom be uh, how shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. The conviction, the power of the God to bring people into the kingdom of God. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. See, Jesus come to provide salvation through his, his miracles, his sinless life, and then what he did on the cross, the, you know, the, the crucifixion, his death, his burial, and resurrection provides salvation over and victory over sin and forgiveness. That's what provides that atonement for us. And so when the Pharisees were saying, it was by the devil you were doing this, they were denying the conviction of the Holy Spirit. There's the key. There's the key right there. Now, thinking about this, let's look at another passage of what the Holy Spirit's job is. Nowadays, even after Jesus uh, ascended back into heaven, it's found in John chapter 16, verse 7 and 8. John 16, verse 7 and 8. It says this, Jesus speaking again, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. 
Now listen to this. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now I'm going to go on just a few more verses. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. And so right there we see what the Holy Spirit is to come, to convict the world of sin, to, to reprove the world of, of sin. And so when you, when you uh, see a passage like that, uh, that's what I love about scriptures. Scripture interprets scripture. So if you take that uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and you want to apply it to uh, whatever you want to apply it to, you can try that, but it doesn't work when you have another scripture to refute it and teaches what it means. So what is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? What is it? It is this. When the Holy Spirit convicts you of sins, you ignore him. And you don't care. You squash that, that conviction. And so when you see that in that context, you see what Jesus was seeing. So it's a person who does not listen to the Holy Spirit's conviction because you know, they can... You can, what well, Jesus says, you can, you can speak against him, you'll be forgiven. Well, because you can't come to him unless you're convicted first. But if you stop the Holy Spirit at the initial point of convicting you, you will never come to Jesus in the first place. And he says, now keep that in mind, let me read it again. So it's a person who refuses to listen to the Holy Spirit, refuses to listen to the conviction power that he's doing, and refuses to come to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So let me read it again. Keep that in, common, that, that in mind. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. And whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Because you won't receive that forgiveness in here. And after death, it is too late. So you won't receive the forgiveness then either. Now here's the thing. I want to point this out. As a believer, we might see somebody say, well, uh, they've committed it. They have been living in the world. They are an awful person for 20 years. They used to know God. Or maybe they never had came to God in the first place. Oh, I'm sure they're, they've committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And they are going to hell. You don't know that. I don't know that. The only one who knows who has committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is God himself. But the thing is, we don't know that. So when you're praying for the salvation and witnessing to somebody, until the rapture comes, until they die, you keep ministering. You keep witnessing because you don't know. I have known believers who walked out in the world for 40, 50 years, and, and all of a sudden they came back and met on fire believers. So they never had committed that. When will it, so the only one knows it's God. And the thing is, God doesn't take his conviction off the person. He's still convicting. He doesn't say, whoop. He's still convicting because he still wants them. He is, he is patient and, and, and wanting everyone to repent. And so what he's doing, he's still convicting, but he just knows the person has reached that, per, that part where they're just not going to listen. Brings up another question. How do you know if you convicted committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Here's the key. If you're worried that you did, that's proof that you did not. If you're worried that you committed the unforgivable sin, that's proof that you did not. Because the Holy Spirit's convicting. The Holy Spirit's bringing you closer to Him. He's trying to get you to ask Him to forgive. And so, if He's convicting, it means you're worried about it. It means you haven't committed it. The one who's committed it won't even care. Won't even care. And so we praise God for the Holy Spirit. We praise God that He that Christ has sent Him to convict us, to to reprove us, to be bringing us to that saving knowledge where we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so rest assured, if you're worried you committed the unforgivable sin, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, well, you have not. And so the thing is, what you do today is receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, ask Him to forgive your sins. You will become a child of God. Um, have, have the road uh, paved to, to get to be at the end, is be with Him, home in heaven. And so just remember when you're uh, living in Christ, you're living in abiding love, 
continue to watch our YouTube videos, subscribe, uh, visit us on, on the, on the uh, website, www.abidinglovewarshipcenter.com. And, um, and so th there's a lot of things you can get. We are also a broadcast radio uh, shows now on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, catch us on Facebook, Abiding Love Worship Center. Friend us. And so just spread the word. And so, so now you understand what the unforgivable sin is. Don't commit it. Just listen to the Holy Spirit and let him lead you to Christ for forgiveness and salvation. Thanks for watching. God bless.